hello, hello. I am going to show you how I make my tube handles. Um, ignore the fact that this tube is all gucky. Um, I had previously made a handle with it and um, decided not to use it. And I pulled it out and got all the tape stuck on it, so that's always fun. Okay, so the materials that you are going to need are plastic tubing or you could also use rope. Um, I don't particularly like using rope because I can't really feel where the rope is sometimes unless you use a really thick rope. One of the ropes that I have is this stuff and it's pretty thick and tough but when it's pinched between vinyl um, I can't really tell where the edge of the rope is very easily so I end up stitching into the rope and that's something I like to avoid so you could absolutely use rope there's nothing wrong with that it's just my personal preference um, to use the tubing instead this particular tubing, um, it's just a PVC uh, clear vinyl tubing uh, with an outer diameter of three eighths of an inch. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me use that. So. You could just about see that. Let's try that again. There you go. Three eighths of an inch. And I got this on Amazon. Um, I will leave a link to the exact tubing that I purchased. However, I would highly recommend that you buy it at a hardware store instead, like Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace or you know, whatever's local to you, because you're gonna get a lot more of it for a better price. I only got 10 feet and I paid like seven bucks, but you can get much longer tubing at a hardware store if you can find it in the right diameter. Um, you can use different diameter if you want thinner or thicker handles, but I find this to be the perfect size. And then you are going to need your fabric. I am using vinyl as I always do and you need it to be four inches wide and as far as the length you want the length to be the length of your tubing plus an additional 10 inches. That's an additional five inches on each side. So this is a 24 inch piece with a 14 inch tube. So to start, I'm going to mark the center of the tube. And with it being 14 inches, I know the center is at seven. And I like to use a bright red marker just so I can see absolutely where I need to be with that. And then I am going to draw a center line at two inches right down the center. As I said, center now three times of my vinyl. So that would be two inches in from the long side. This is going to tell you just where to um, fold your vinyl. Okay, so if you have seen several of my other videos, I'm sure you know by now, I am a double-sided tapeaholic. So 
So I am going to put a strip of double-sided tape right down the center. Now you could stop here, but because I'm using a thicker vinyl, I know that it's not going to fold in as nicely as it would if it was something thinner. So I'm actually going to make two additional lines at one inch in from each long edge. was not holding on to that very well. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to take some more double-sided tape and I'm going to run that right at or just over those lines that I just drew. Again, this is totally optional. I know a lot of people don't like using double-sided tape and that's totally fine. This is just the way that I prefer it. Definitely makes my life a whole lot easier. All right, so now we can just go ahead and peel those off. And then going from one side, I'm going to fold that in towards the center. Now what the second row of tape is going to do is it's going to ensure that the folded edge here stays nice and crisp and tight. Because I, otherwise it will bubble up and that's not going to be ideal for um, the final fold um, before stitching. And then I flip it around and do the other side. You don't have to worry about leaving a gap. Um, if you do, it's just going to make the roll a little bit more loose in the end. Um, also, I do want to note that you don't have to do um, four inches wide like I'm doing. You could do a two inch wide if you want the, um, if you're doing a thicker fabric and you want it to be a little bit thinner, relying solely on the tube for the thickness, that is totally fine. And then I'm gonna roll it with my leather roller. Now, as you can see, that's nice and flat. Next, I am going to take some more double-sided tape and I'm going to run it right there, but we need to make marks first. So, gotta find my, I can't find my other ruler. Oh, here's one. Okay. So you're going to go five inches in. From each side. And then you're also going to make another mark at four inches in.
on both sides. So the two center lines, the five inch lines, that is where you want to make sure your tubing sits perfectly right in between those lines. You don't want it to go over. So I'm going to take my double sided tape and I'm actually going to only do one edge but I'm going to go all the way down to the four inch line and then stretch it all the way across to the other four inch line. And then to make things easier because, I mean, you can do this later, but I like to do it early, is I will take double-sided tape and run it from the four inch line straight down the center towards the end of the fabric on both sides. But like I said, you can do it later if you'd prefer. So now I'm going to remove this side piece of tape and I'm going to, oh, first, sorry, I forgot to mark my center. So right at 24, at the 12 inch mark, Go ahead and draw the center line, and then I'm going to use the red line on here to lay it right in the center, right over the long center line, as well as in the center of the short bit for the, uh, I don't know what the hell I just said. Lay it right down in the absolute center, and it looks like this leftover gucky tape is going to help me out here. If you want to add a strip of double-sided tape down the center, you can. You don't have to. So now you're going to roll it by pressing your fingers on the back, or on, I guess it would be the top. Roll and squeeze until the two long edges meet in the center. You could clip it if you'd prefer, but I like to use the double-sided tape. And then you're just going to continue holding the tube down, rolling from the back side up, and pinching. And you go right up to the end of that double-sided tape or where the four inch mark is. Go through and kind of, re kind of reinforce your pinches or whatever. So you've got something like this. You can see how it's starting to take shape. And where that double-sided tape stops, that is where you are going to stop stitching. So if it makes it easier for you, you can take your ruler and mark a four inch line or mark a line at four inches right on the side. I'm just gonna add the other one here.
so you know where to start and stop your stitching. Now, before I stitch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add magnets so that nothing shifts. Um, I also am using a very narrow, very, very narrow uh, zipper foot. It looks like this. This is a narrow Teflon zipper foot for an industrial machine. I would say find the equivalent for whatever your machine is. Um, if you're using a walking foot machine, I believe there are also um, zipper feet for those. And mine is a left because I'm going to have the tubing on the left and then stitch on the right. If you want to go the other way, make sure you have a right facing foot so that you can have your tubing on the right and the stitches on the left. So first thing I'm going to measure where I want it to be, and it should be right at about two millimeters in. And with my foot down holding this in place, I'm going to put my first magnet right up against the edge. Just to be cautious, I'm going to put a second magnet behind it. If you have larger magnets or if you have a, um, a guide foot, you probably won't have to do anything like this. And then I'm going to place another magnet on the tube side making sure that it's firmly sandwiched in between the two magnets. And then just to make sure, again, I am going to put a couple more magnets against this one so that it doesn't shift. Isn't that pretty? Let's pull you down a little bit. Let's see if you can see that better. Get a better angle here. Hopefully it stays. Okay. So now I want to start my stitches right where that little mark is. So I'm going to line that up with where my needle is and drop it in. And there is no tube right here. So don't freak out about that. The tube starts an inch back from where I will start stitching. Okay. I am setting my stitch length to five. I'm gonna hold my threads so they don't go anywhere. Now, this part is personal preference. I am going to pull my threads through to the other side, so I'm pulling them long so that I have a little bit of excess for doing so. If you would rather, you can backstitch, but you're going to have those extra stitches visible. So I'm going to turn on my machine, hold the threads, and start stitching. You want to try and keep everything within the channel that you've created. If you don't have a stitching path or channel, just try and hold the uh, material as best you can. Now I am also pushing slightly towards my needle to make sure that the vinyl butts up against it as much as possible. Be very careful not to stitch your fingers. 
All right, and I messed up my mark here, but I know it's the first one here. All right, and now I'm going to stop, pull my threads along, and snip. So now for the next part, I'm going to fight the tape a little bit here, and I'm going to pull my threads through. It looks like I missed one, which is totally fine. I'll just pop it out. Stick it on a hand sewing needle. And then pop it right back through the hole that it was supposed to go through. No big deal. All right, now going to tie a few knots for extra stability you can use a little bit a fray check on there or you can use a lighter or a thread zapper which is what I'm using here just to kind of melt it down a little bit so it stays put so that's what your ends should look like and as you can see this tape got tucked in there. That's why I recommend doing it earlier, but you could still lay the tape in there now if you needed to. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same. Okay, so now what you're going to do is peel off the double-sided tape and you're going to fold in to the center. You just press it all the way up to where you stopped stitching. And then you'll have this nice flat end. I'm going to turn it around and do the other side. And just like that. And these should now be one inch wide. Just want to grab a square ring to show you. These are one inch square rings, so it fits on there quite loose. All right, so now I can lose my magnets. Just put those back up. And now, if you want to, you can switch to a normal foot. I pretty much only use narrow Teflon feet, 
So I'm just going to switch back to my regular foot. going to do is you are going to top stitch up one side across and then back down you want to top stitch as close to where you stopped the other stitching as possible but you don't want to force it so I typically go right about here which is just as the vinyl starts to kind of taper up And I will stitch this at a 1 8 inch um, top stitch. And now I'm going to switch from a 4 millimeter to, or from a 5 millimeter to a 4 millimeter stitch just to cross over the top here because I know it'll take 5 stitches. And then I'll go back to a five and go back down. And then I will repeat that on the other side. And now, once that is done, you can see, let me pull this up a little bit. You can see that you now have the tube with your connector pieces. So here is where I will add, typically I have this already on a bag. So I will just add it to the top and I will fold it up to where the stitching stopped. And then I will add two rivets right here. And if you wanted to, if you have your rivets down far enough, you even have enough room for an end cap. So you could tuck a cap on there. Have it up to that stitch line. Pop in a couple of rivets and you're good to go. If your tube looks a little wonky when it's not on the bag, that's totally fine because it will train to be the correct shape, just like that. Once it's stitched on, it'll look right. Um, if you feel like you want the tubing to go down a little bit more so it's not squishy like this, I don't mind the squishy ends, but you could drop it down another half inch and be totally fine with it. But other than that, that's done. So I hope that um, this was helpful for you. It's um, not the perfect way to make tube handles. It's not the best way or the only way. This is just the way that I do it. And it's easy for me to understand and follow. And hopefully it was able, hopefully it was easy for you to understand and follow. I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed and then maybe I'll find a bag to add this to tomorrow. Bye.